Good afternoon. It is the 22nd of April and um, still in quarantine, still in lockdown. And um, again, another PSA. I've started my last, I think, two videos with it. But I know it's sunny outside. It's really nice out there. And I know it is, you know, glorious weather, especially for the UK. But if you are thinking of going outside or going and visiting your mates or your parents or going and visiting your friends or taking the kids out, don't. Really, 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 I cannot emphasize enough, don't. Please do not. Um, this pandemic, and it is a pandemic, is bad. And again, for those that don't know or are new to my channel, I work in a, a medical facility in East London, and the last couple of months have been rough. So please, stay indoors. It ain't going to be forever. But what I thought I would do in this video um, is show you how, even though we're all stuck indoors, maybe there is still something we can do. And again, going back to the ethos of this channel, we can do it super cheap. So uh, it might take a while, but we've got time to kill. So a while ago, I ordered from, where did I order it from? I think it was from eBay. Um, a shell, uh, like a clear plastic shell for a uh, shock 4 because I figured I'm going to give uh, myself another little treat and mod another controller for myself. Um, modding controllers is now apparently one of my favourite things to do because it is so cheap and it can be done really quickly and really easily. But I'm seeing if I can set a new bar for how little I can spend. So... Very, very, very quickly. Um, I modded uh, a DualShock 4. I did... Um, what else? Uh, no, I modded a DualShock 2 to be wireless. I modded a game controller. I did all of that. I took a 360 controller apart. Um, and originally, I modded a... Somewhere in here. Yep, here it is. I modded um, this, which is a Nintendo Pro controller which is arguably the most comfortable. This is a Nintendo Switch, official Nintendo Switch Pro controller, arguably the most ergonomic controller ever made, like ever made. This thing is so unbelievably comfortable. I don't own a Nintendo Switch. I bought it to use with my Raspberry Pi. Like I use this all the time. Absolutely love it. However, a close second to that is the DualShock 4. So I, built myself uh, uh, an emulation PC. I, I am a massive advocate for Raspberry Pis, but there's only so much they can do. So a couple months ago, I built myself, I think it came to total about 120, and it's um, uh, a, a very basic um, Dell machine, which I put in a very basic graphic card, and it just does uh, all the stuff that the Raspberry Pis can't do well yet. So PSP, Dreamcast, Saturn, N64, uh, 3DS, uh, Atari Jaguar, 3DO, stuff like that. And that's my emulation machine. And PS2 as well. GameCube, Wii. Um, and for that, I use a DualShock 4. Wireless DualShock 4. The little, tiny little, like, one pound Bluetooth dongle. Works really well. But I thought I'd treat myself. So as soon as I've got that switch controller, which is the blood splatter, which has become my aesthetic, as the kids would say, has become my sort of motif. Um, it goes back to one of my very first Raspberry Pi projects when I built this. This is what I ended up calling the Exodus Box 360, because again, I'm a fan of really dumb names, and it is a portable Raspberry Pi in a Perspex box and I built it with clear hinges and it is all the way around and it's got this blood splatter motif. Now this motif came from a guitarist called, uh, his name is Gary Holt and he played, at the time he played for Slayer but he's well known for playing with Exodus. Um, so hence the Exodus box 360. Dumb title but I really liked it. Um, Gary Holt's got a blood splattered Flying V and it's amazing. And since then, I've made this, and I made that controller. Now that controller is actually sort of like candy pink underneath, but it shows blood red when it's done. So 
since then, I've made a couple of other controllers, um, one of which I did on a live stream, actually, uh, where I did a purple and... What was it? It was like purple and white splatter controller, a SNES one, which was really nice. But yeah, this is now my motif. This is my go-to. I love this. Um, and it's really simple and really cheap to do. You just get some red acrylic paint and some white car paint. Now, I made everything you see here. I made... The only thing I didn't make was the hinges. I bought those clear transparent hinges, but I made everything else, made the box, made everything. Um, and the way you do it is super simple. Here's the off cut. And the way you do it, you literally, I don't know if you can see the ridges there, you just splatter red acrylic paint and then just a quick coat of gloss white car paint. It costs a quid from the pound shop. It's really cheap. And then when you look through it, you can scratch that and ding it up and do whatever you like with it. It's ne The paint is never going to chip and it's never going to flick because it's underneath a clear piece of acrylic, essentially. So this will never, I can throw it in my bag and do whatever I want with it. It's never going to scratch. It's never going to ding. Right. So this leads me back to my DualShock 4. Um, I have a whole fleet of custom controllers now. So again, I want this in a controller. And I did this for the for the Switch controller, but how can I do that for a DualShock 4? This DualShock 4 is broken, so I do actually have to fix it. The L3 is broken, so I'm probably going to have to just resolder something or, you know, redo a trace, um, just reconnect a trace or maybe even swap out a joystick. But either way, it's not going to be, you know, super complicated. But this is a broken DualShock 4. And what I want it to do is essentially look like that when I'm done. So, a while ago I ordered this. Now this is from China, so I am going to scrub it. I mean, I do, with all my controller mods, I do take the electronics out, put it in a bowl of warm-ish soapy water, and scrub it with a toothbrush, because um, it gets all the gunk and the dirt off and whatnot. And if I want the paint to adhere to this, I've really got to scrub it. But on top of that, I'm also going to properly scrub it, because I ordered this pre-pandemic. So the thing with stuff like this is you can order stuff from China and it will come eventually, um, but you've just got to wait for the container to be filled up, uh, filled up. So I ordered this a long while ago, but that said, it did only cost me four pounds twenty five delivered. That's why you wait. So what I'm going to do is have a quick look in here and see if I can make that DualShock Four. And what I want to do is take the insides of this black one. And put it inside whatever is in here. Hopefully it's the right thing. If not, you I mean if you're looking at this video, it probably went well. Because otherwise I'm just not gonna put it up. Okay, so okay, we're not really got a lot in there. We just got again, when you order this stuff from eBay on China, it's always 50-50. This could be junk. I have no clue. This could be absolute garbage. Let's have a look. Okay, it comes in separate bags inside. First thing we've got, it's not, it's not clear, clear. There is kind of a, like a yellow-ish tint to it, but maybe that's just dirt and grime. Maybe the soap will clean that out a bit. And I don't know why you would order one of these if you actually wanted a clear one, because it's not clear, essentially, is it? Because the inside is a big piece of black plastic. I've never taken apart a DualShock 4 before, so I don't know how hard this is going to be. All right, okay, so I'm assuming in here then we have buttons and... Oh, you also have a small screwdriver. Nice, I guess. And then just this, just a little bag. This is how it came. I have not been through this bag. <laughs> right, okay. So again, now that I've been touching this bag and this controller, my hands are going nowhere near my face. They're going nowhere near, you know. I cannot stress how important it is to disinfect everything you touch. Okay, so we've got a bag full of little components. Let's get rid of that. So it looks like we've got some clear joysticks, some clear triggers, a clear D-pad, and then I guess a clear touchpad, which is cool. So all the buttons are clear. Okay, and the joysticks are clear. Also good, so I can get a decent amount of paint, I think, in there, but I'm not going to be able to flood. Like... The only way to get white joysticks would to be put white joysticks on. I might end up 
putting white caps on the joystick. I think that might be better. Um, but the rest of it I want splattered. Unless I put red caps on the joysticks. Might do that actually. Um, this, I'm not sure. This is obviously a part for the insides. This looks like the light. No, this looks like the light on the outside. So what is that then? That's obviously something for the inside. Yeah, that's obviously goes inside somewhere. And then I've got this piece of white plastic here, which again, I don't know what any of this is. There are no instructions. <laughs> I'm kind of figuring this out as, a, uh, as I'm going along. What I'm going to have to do is reverse engineer it. So what I'm going to do is take this one apart uh, because I need the electronics in, out of you know this anyway, and I need to fix the L3 um, trigger. So if I reverse engineer it, what I'll do is I'll take this one apart, figure out how it's put together, then figure out what this is, and this, and these. But again, £4.25 delivered. Not really going to argue. And hopefully, I mean, it's clear enough. Again, hopefully that scrubbing will take the... the it's got like a kind of yellowish tint, but I did notice that when I took the GameCube controller apart as well. I thought it was that kind of um, fire retardant chemical that they put in the plastic. But looking at it, I mean... That will actually work. And it for a Chinese knockoff, again, you've got little plastic, like the cut isn't brilliant, so along the edges you can kind of see where they haven't sort of cut it properly. It was never going to be perfect. But hopefully it will be my aesthetic, as the kids say. And for £4.25, so the total cost, all right? I'm going to use this sort of, I've got this acrylic paint, here, which I picked up years ago when I built I built this at the when did I build this the end of 2017 so uh, this is the same paint so it, it might be good it might be garbage but even then it's a quid so four pound 25 for that delivered a pound for that and a pound for that so for six pound 25 can I build an absolutely awesome DualShock 4. Or will this just turn out to be a complete failure and I chuck it in the bin? If I chuck it in the bin, I'm, you know, the cost of a Big Mac meal down. You know what I mean? Not that you could buy one now anyway, but that's, you know what I mean? I'm out of pocket for, you know, £6.25. So let's have a look. First things first, I'm going to take this, uh, well, no, first things first, I'm going to have a coffee after I've washed my hands. Um, I'm going to take apart that, um, yeah, first things first, take apart the black controller and then figure out how it's put together because I've never taken apart a DualShock before. Then find out where all of this stuff goes because, again, no instructions, just rando pieces of plastic in a little, like, stash bag and this was, like, in a little sandwich bag, so I'll figure it out. And then once I've done that, clean it within an inch of its life, mask it off, I mean, if you want to add that to the cost as well, I mean, that was, again, a quid. So I'm literally doing this for as cheap as possible. If you want to um, include my screwdriver set, again, a pound. Like, I, you can do this dirt cheap. You do not have to spend a lot of money to do this. And you don't have to leave the house. You can get this stuff from eBay. It'll take a while. But like I say, we've all got time to kill. You might have time to kill. I don't really have a lot of time to kill, which is why I'm doing this. Now, um, right, let's get started. First things first, let's wash our hands, wash this, and uh, let's get to work. Okay, this is now the following day, and I have absolutely scrubbed this thing to within an inch of its life. Again, just some warm soapy water, uh, not too hot because you don't want to warp, warp the plastic, just some warm soapy water and a toothbrush. Just literally give it a bit of a going over with some washing up liquid, absolutely a okay um this thing came in a ton of parts when i opened up that little sort of little stash bag that they put inside with it you've got these two major parts and then you've got a whole bunch let's see if i can just whip it across here a whole bunch of like little pieces of plastic and oh everything so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna right now disassemble this black one and hopefully if i get stuck i can just watch this video back and uh 
again, it's a it's a process of reverse engineering this black controller. So let me just get these pieces out of the way. Right, so here we are. Um, the one thing I am going to use is a glass. And what I do is I normally put all the screws and small plastic parts in there so they don't get lost. Just for um, just to get my money's worth out of that, whatever it was, £4.25, I am actually going to use the screwdriver that came with it, which again has also been cleaned. So let's get started. Oh, there's no grip on this screwdriver. It's completely smooth. So my hands are uh, not greasy, but my hands are, you know, not exactly bone dry. And getting a grip on this is really difficult. So again, it is possible, but maybe not recommended. I don't know. Is that a screw? I think it is. Okay, let's try peeling this off. E no, that's not a screw. What is that? It's a little injection, injection mold marking. Okay. Okay, I think. Yeah, that's definitely not a screw. Okay, so only four screws. Okay, cool. Now I don't have a little spudger or anything I can take this apart with. Hmm, maybe there is something. Where Where is the best place to get a, a finger hold onto this? Oh, I wouldn't even know where to begin. I don't want to break it. I don't want to have to snap off the touchpad. And there really is no sort of tactile surfaces to do this. I'm going to need some kind of... Yeah, I'm going to need some kind of lever. But I'm not quite sure what yet. Interesting. Okay, so looking at the shell I bought, I can see that these four screws go all the way through to the front and it kind of pushes in that way and there are also these kind of like resistance clips here and sort of on the actual thing itself it looks like there's this kind of wedge plus there's two little clips down here as well so i think what i've got to do is loosen it here and down here to get the thing apart come on in you get all right that's two ah and then the other side just pops open cool right so again, it's a learning process. Again, it's not pretty, but it's done. Now, I don't want this thing to explode, right? So I know that there's another clip up here somewhere, judging by the clear plastic one. What I'm assuming happens is that the Chinese bootleggers literally take one of these apart and cast a mold from it. Right, so obviously the back comes off first and it looks like the light is attached by a ribbon. Is there a uh, is there a small little ribbon? Pop, there we go. So it can come apart that way. All right, so what have we got inside? Just a tiny little PCB that's screwed in and the screw kind of just disappears there. And right, okay. Okay. Yep, so now I'm beginning to see what these plasticky bits do down here. Although my plasticky bit isn't quite the same shape so I think this clear bit here I don't actually have that this bit I do not have which is interesting that didn't come in the kit that I can see anyway it looks like everything else did though so I'm gonna have to keep this clear bit here right cool and what do we got here a tiny little PCB two motors does the Mm, interesting as well. This one doesn't have those two. Yeah, the inside plastic bit for that is actually a little bit different. It doesn't have those two arms that come out and attach to those screws there. And let's just disconnect this. Can I just disconnect this? Yeah. Take the battery out. Fully charged battery, so that's fine. Okay, yep, that's looking pretty good. And then that's obviously the ribbon for, I'm assuming, all the buttons on the front. Or, no, it wouldn't be. That would be for the touchpad, maybe? Not sure. Not sure what that bit's for. Also, again, this plastic section here is not like the plastic section I've got. It's completely different. Okay, so now I've loosened this screw here. 
That's even a magnetic screwdriver, are you kidding me? Okay. All right, so um, this little screw here seems to hold everything in. As soon as I unscrewed it, I felt all the tension on the, the buttons and the sticks just go. So I believe that this screw holds the entire thing together. So let's quickly remove this. Okay, let's have a quick look here. So putting it down gently should just pop things forward a little bit. There we go. This is how I normally take things apart. Just, just a little bit of pressure on the front tends to. Right, okay, so we've got some movement on the touchpad, but looking at the other one, the touchpad kind of snakes its way in. It doesn't sort of sit on top. There's actually sort of like a, a guardrail that's holding it down. So I just want to apply a little bit of pressure, but I don't want to... Did I just snap that? No, I didn't. Okay. I'm worried about this ribbon cable here. I'm wondering whether it's worth taking it off now. I believe that that goes to the touchpad, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I can see it through that little gap. I'm going to have to... I am actually going to have to take that off. I, did, I was hoping I wouldn't have to, but it's looking like I'm going to have to take it off. Okay, I'm just going to... Wiggle, 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 and out. Okay, so now there's no fear of breaking that ribbon because I do actually need the touchpad because that is my mouse cursor on my PC. All right, so that now slides out real nice. Okay, what have we got on there? We've got what looks like a speaker with a dust, um, like a little foam dust shield on it. Plastic membranes, so exactly the same as the PS2. Um, and the PS3, really. They haven't really changed much. Uh, the triggers look like they're soldered. Yep, straight onto the board. There's no daughter board. And that's about it. It's all really simple. The jack looks like it's soldered in, so it doesn't... Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, the jack is soldered in. Let's take these membranes out and put those in the cup with the others. Now, that bit I don't need because that's the old one. And this membrane I do. This is for the PlayStation button. And this button I do not, so that can go over here. This membrane I do need, and these buttons I do not. Okay, let's get rid of those. So the little, I don't even know what kind of, it's like a little capacitive touchpad on here. Let's see how this works. Ah, yeah, so it's got the same little thing. It's just got this little, little guardrail that stops it flying forward. And then that's really it. So looking at these, they look pretty much. Right, so the only difference is that this post here is on the wrong side. So if you look, the post here is on this side. And this post is on the other side. Other than that, oh, and there are a few little notches up the top. Look, this notch here that holds the trigger in, that's not there. Weird. Okay, and there's another post here that's not here. They've moved that post that was down here, they've moved it up here. Um, this membrane does not fit over the plastic chassis that came with it. As you can see, there is a thread through here, and then this little thing, I know this from the PlayStation 2, this little thing is supposed to have a little rubber piece in here, and this um, membrane is supposed to post through this little letterbox, and be pushed down against the PCB with a little rubber piece here. So, as you can see, this goes up here, which led me to opening up my blue DualShock 4. And inside you'll see JDM001. You'll also see that the PCB inside is completely different. It's, for a start, I've, I've desoldered the, um, the uh, motors off this one. So as you can see, it is wider and the chips are in a different place and this one up here is labeled jdm 0 uh, jdm 11 so this uh and you can see the the little spots that come through plus the little screw hole is completely different which is why i cannot screw this clear plastic chassis shut so what do i do well what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this PCB out of this one and transfer that into here and then put the black one back together. Um, the little, I mean, this should be a one for one swap now. I can see that this plastic uh, cage inside is exactly the same as the one that is inside the clear bootleg. 
and completely different to the one that's inside the other one. Hey baby, what's up? Yeah, give me a second. So what I'm going to do is leave this attached everything in here and I'm going to just unscrew it and hopefully just a one for one swap into this clear plastic chassis. So put the black one back together. That's going to be my spare backup now. I mean, I fixed the L3 issue with the uh, just a little drop of solder over the back to put that back together. But yeah. There are different models. I, th I did say I thought it might be a different uh, hardware revision, and it is. It is completely different inside. So, yeah. So, this is now going to be my uh, my blood splat one. Hopefully, it turns out all right, because this is the one that I use for my PC the most. So, hopefully, it works. Okay, as pretty much predicted, the blue sh DualShock is apart, and it fits absolutely one for one inside the class uh, plastic case the clear bootleg one i haven't even changed over the skeletal bit in the middle so if you're buying these you need the jdm dash 011 at least that one i don't know if they made any more revisions but if yours has is this revision then yeah they all fit pretty much perfectly um all i need to do now is paint really i mean the buttons are there Everything's back together. It looks like it's pretty much good to go. All I need to do, again, I'm not going to need any of these parts. The only thing I need is the capacitive uh, touchpad transferred across. And that now makes a hell of a lot of sense because I couldn't figure out what these plastic bits were. But as you can see, look, it's the back of the capacitive touchpad. So everything's kind of making sense right now. Um, I've been banging my head against it for ages before I realized it has to be a different revision. So black one out, the blue one's going to be changed over, but I can always, because I've obsessed with being able to revert things back to stock, the blue one, at any point, I can just swap the insides out super, super, super easily. Okay, after trying and failing to wrap this thing in two halves, what I've decided to do is I've screwed it together, and I'm just going to embalm it like a mummy, because I don't want any of the outsides to have paint touch to it. So what I'm going to do is literally wrap this uh, frog tape all over the thing nice and tight and then run a razor blade along the seam line then take it apart and hopefully that should be you know nice and uh, nice and together the sticks i'm not going to bother because i'm going to paint those separately and the triggers i'm going to paint separately because all i'm doing with that is just adding more surface area to get accidental paint splashes on so what i've done is i've run some tape across there to keep the uh the the player light in and I'm going to run some more tape along here to keep uh, the touchpad in and then run some uh, frog tape along here to keep the buttons in. Once that's done, like I say, split it in two halves and then uh, spray the inside so the outside you can touch all day and nothing will happen. Alright, let's, uh, let's start wrapping this thing up. Okay, so now we are completely wrapped up with frog tape. There is not a single solitary section of clear plastic. So it's not brilliant, but it's about as good as I can do. And then what I'm going to do now is make sure all of the surface area is covered with this stuff. I mean, this stuff is super, super sticky. And then I am going to run a razor blade along uh, the full, uh, the join line using the original as a guide and then I should have a nice clean cut and then that is ready to start spraying. Big drops. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, now for the other one. I might come back to that one after. Okay, let's do a few. Okay, that's not bad. That's a good one, I like that. 
Yep. All right, let's just go excess paint. Right, I'm missing, so I need to aim a little bit lower. Perfect, look at that. Okay, aim lower. Perfect. Oh, that's a good one. Again, another good one. Right. What do I do? Do I call it? No. Right, I'm actually running a bit low on paint now. So what I need to do is, that's a good one. All right, what I need to do now is debris flicks. So this, oh, I need my glove. A slightly larger, more rigid brush. Let's get excess of paint on there. And there we go. Flick, flick. Can you see? Uh, I'm almost done, baby, and then you can see. All right, back up. Looking at it, I won't. Yeah. Is that not on your wall? I haven't got it on the wall. No, I'm saying don't. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll try not to. You could have just been painting. Why not? Because you could have just um, painted it all green and do red stripes on it. That would be way cooler. Yeah. It would look like a Christmas tree. It does look a little bit like a Christmas tree, doesn't it? Maybe next time you do one of these, maybe you should do a Christmassy one. Mm -hmm. Like a, a full green one, even in the inside with um, little stripes. Mm -hmm. I'm quite happy with the way that came out. Um, could have done a bit with a few more big splats, but I do kind of like the splash pattern there. I like the fact that the splash pattern goes across. Yeah, I actually look quite like that. Okay, now all I'm going to need to do is wait for the dry. Okay, I've also splattered a little bit of red paint in each of the uh, triggers and the two joysticks, and I've masked them off, and now they're pointing up. Like I've, I've put them on a piece of tape pointing up, ready for the spray paint. Okie doke, it's the following morning and I think we're dry and ready to go. What I did was last night, I was up quite late, not because of this, just in general. I was up quite late and decided to uh, whack on the white paint because why not? So I've done a few coats. The buttons are in, so what I've got to do is kind of <clears throat> loosen it quite gently around the buttons. Um, the paint shouldn't go all the way down, so that shouldn't be an issue. There shouldn't be any paint around there. Um, I've done the joysticks, and I've done the triggers, which you can see. So they look pretty good. And I took the touchpad off because of this crossbar here. This is the bar that sort of like keeps it in, and it would have just made a silhouette on there, so I took that off. So I did one pass with the blood, so the blood would actually... Um, or the splatter patterns will go straight across. Then I removed it, then I did the white. So hopefully, this is now ready to go. I'm a little bit busy this morning, but when I'm finished doing what I'm doing, I'm gonna take that apart and hopefully put the thing back together again. It might need a little bit of tidying up. I've got to clean up the hinges here. So these hinges have got paint on, and what I'm gonna do is just take a razor blade and scratch the paint off so it doesn't squeak when I pull the triggers. The paint is now dry, and as you can see, the backing paper is ready to be, or masking paper really, because it's 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 on the front, uh, is ready to be pulled off. So I'm going to do that in a second. I did just put a little thing on Twitter where I peeled the front off this. Yes, but as you can see. It looks pretty nice. So that's kind of the effect I'm going for. 
Um, which again is pretty close to my uh, original test. Like this was the one back in 2017. This was my original test for this uh, for the uh, box, the Exodus box, and I think I kind of like that. So let's have a quick look at how these look. I have no idea. Maybe they're good. Maybe they're just hot garbage. Um, what I am going to need to do is take a razor blade and tidy it up because obviously when you're working with paint as a medium, you're going to get excess paint somewhere. Not all your masking tape is going to be perfect. You're going to need to tidy it up, but a little razor blade, because you're working on plastic, a little razor blade, just scratch it off. It'll be fine. It's it. You know what? We're doing this for under, what, eight quid? It's, you know, we, it's not going to be brilliant, but Let's have a quick look. So what I'm going to do, this is probably going to fall off, but hopefully it will look good when I peel. So this is kind of the moment of truth. Again, the, the car paint does have a little bit of elasticity to it, which is not really ideal, but let's see what it looks like. So again, I've got no idea. Hopefully this looks good. I don't know. But for what we paid, I'll take it looking okay. All right, I don't really want to scratch too much, but I need to get that corner up. Okay. Um, again, big shout out to Gary Holt, who was, he's been in a number of bands, but obviously is most associated with Exodus and recently Slayer because that flying V is the impetus for all of this and the inspiration, the muse as it were, for all of this. And I know he was he was uh, diagnosed COVID plus and apparently he's doing a lot better now. So I'm really super happy about that because Gary Holt's one of the good guys. All right, let's, let's have a look. That is looking, I think you'll agree, Pretty dope. It's looking a bit weird in the viewfinder. In the viewfinder, it looks a bit pink, but uh, it's very bright white out of it. Okay, so let's peel that off. Yep. I just I'm hoping I haven't got any blank spots where the white paint didn't take, but it's looking okay. Now, obviously, you're going to have these lines here. These lines here are the uh, the actual join lines for the insides uh what are the joins lines the, these things basically inside the separators and there's nothing i can do about that however with the kind of chaotic pattern that it is it doesn't really make that much of a difference so i'm already quite happy with the back again pulling but not not yanking being very very gentle But overly, I am, I am definitely feeling this. And it is going to need, you can see around the edges, it is going to need cleaning up with a razor blade. Just the excess paint uh, to come off. And it doesn't take long. It takes a few minutes. It is a little tricky considering I'm using pound shop tools and equipment. But that's the aim of the game, isn't it? As cheap as humanly possible. There we go. So I'm gonna leave that little piece of green on there for the minute. But yeah, as you can see, that looks pretty awesome. Let's actually, let's take that off. Who knows? Who knows? It might stay in, it might not. Hey, so there's my sensor bar. And it is just absolutely covered. Awesome, right. That I am happy with, but the piece de resistance, is the front. Now hopefully the buttons don't go boing as soon as I uh, pull it. Uh, I haven't loosened the paint yet so hopefully they'll stay in place just long enough for me to get a general idea of what I'm looking at and again hopefully there's no blank spots in here I really don't want there to be but it's looking quite nice so far and then if I put the touchpad in we might get a, a general idea because I still have to disconnect the touchpad from here the uh, 
capacitive touchpad and then swap that across. I'm not quite sure what that's going to entail, but I do need it because that is, like I said, that's my mouse cursor for my PC. I actually use the touchpad as a mouse cursor, so I don't need to hook up like a wireless mouse and keyboard. Even though I do have one, I don't want to use it if I can get away with just using a controller because what I'm building is not a PC as such, it's just an emulation device. So for all intents and purposes, it's just a big bulky console, multi-console. Because like I said, I, I am a huge advocate for the Raspberry Pi, but there are just some things it just can't do well yet. And, oh, very, 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 very gentle. Oh, I am really feeling that. Right, I think the D-pad might fall out, but I'm not going to... Yeah, the D-pad's coming out. Okay. Let's just go very, very, very slowly across here. you got to remember, this isn't masking tape. This is like that special... There it goes. Oh, my God. Do I remember which way it went in? Uh, I'll figure it out in a minute. All right. So... Yeah, this is like painter's tape. This isn't necessarily masking tape. Yeah, I've got to do a lot of tidying up along there. You can see where the paint has just crept. That's just unfortunate, but whatever. It's the hazards of the medium, I guess. All right, let's peel that back. Okay. Oh, there's quite a lot of paint on there I've got to sort out. Okay, well, that'll keep me busy for another half hour or so. But I think you'll agree... Let's get the D-pad back in there. Which way does the D-pad go? The splats kind of go that way, I guess. Is it that way? Or that way? I don't really know. Let's say the splats go uh, that way. I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of trace it there. So as you can see, that looks pretty awesome. Let's put the... Um, how does this go? This goes this way, doesn't it? Again, I don't really want to scratch it or anything, but there we go. So as you can see, that is looking pretty good so far. And hopefully, I love that splat, that just that constant thing across there. It goes across the touchpad and the buttons. I really like that. And the like, it looks it's kind of manhandled down here. That's pretty awesome. But yeah, really feeling that. Really am. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, tidy up along here, get the excess paint off of here, uh, and then move the little capacitive touchpad across and then whack the thing back together. But, yeah, that's quite nice. Righto, well, all the buttons are clean. Um, I've taken most of the excess paint off of the chassis. Um, I did get quite a bit around the edges on both the handles. For some reason, the, the I didn't adhere the frog tape uh, properly. I mean, you can't really see it, but it is noticeable. However, um, where I'm touching it and, you know, you've got hand sweat and, and, and friction and whatnot, that paint should come off. So I'm not too worried about that. It's just a very, very fine seam around the edges. It's barely noticeable. Taking the excess off the buttons down here. Let's just swing that around. Woo. Taking the excess off the buttons, laid it all out. It's all looking pretty good. Um, I've managed to get the uh, capacitive touchpad off of the plastic. I have made a note of where the front is with a Sharpie pen. So what I've done is I've cleaned this within an inch of its life. It's nice and shiny now. It was just adhered with some double-sided tape. So I'm going to stick it into the new uh, touchpad area. And then I think it's time to put this thing together and have a couple of games all right cool okay and we are done now it does need a little bit of cleaning up around the join lines but um yeah i am super happy with the way that has turned out it's even got blood under there splats on there i love the way it you know goes across yeah i am super duper happy with the way this has turned out and i am really looking forward to using it yeah like I say, it still needs a little bit of cleaning up around the sides, but um, no, overly, I'm super happy with the way that's turned out. Okay, and we're all done. What an absolute belter 
of a controller. It looks absolutely blinding. Really, really pleased with this. Um, it doesn't really need to be said again, but I'm going to say it again. Please, please, please stay indoors. Quarantine is what you make it. And I made this for less than eight quid. And you know what, it'll kill a couple of days. Just order the parts on eBay, wait for them to come in, and then go for it. I mean, if it if it if it turns out wrong, or you don't like it, or you think, yeah, I'm not really feeling that, bin it. You've lost, you know what I mean? What, the price of a Big Mac meal? You know what I mean? It, so, stay indoors. There are things you can do, and you can make kick-ass projects like this for nothing. So it is what you make it. Again, please, please, please stay indoors. It's super important. You'll be doing me and everyone I work with a massive, massive favour. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I really hope I inspire someone just to give it a go. I mean, why not? What have you got to lose? Cool. Peace.